Hi everyone, welcome to the latest episode of Liquidware Chats. In this episode, we talk to industry analyst Gabe Knute. Gabe talks about his career in EUC, and then we look at um, what is DEX. Obviously, there's some de- definitions in the industry, but we, we look a little bit deeper about what DEX actually is, and we also look at that in comparison with employee experience. So along with that, we also then, you know, that brings in AI. And AI is a topic we're all aware that is becoming more and more common in EUC. So we finish with a discussion around um, the impact of AI on EUC. Really hope you enjoy the episode. Thanks very much. Hi, James. How are you doing? I'm doing well. And yourself? I can't complain. It's a busy time. Uh, Conference season is back in full swing again. Absolutely, Uh, yes. (laughs) It's nice to see the events actually be you know, have attendees and stuff and to not do the, the simul live events and so on that we've yeah, I, had for I'm, the last I'm, three I'm, years. I know. I'm not a fan of hybrid events. I have to say, I, I, I can get why people do, you know, because people are geographically dispersed and all that. But I, I just feel like I, I run the Irish Citrix user group with um another guy and we, you know, uh, we actually don't do hybrid because we want people to have that kind of experience um, yeah. of, of just being there. So, but it, look, it's a catch 22. Sometimes you'll get more people if you do hybrid and that, but um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm really looking forward. I've got a couple of events coming up this for the remainder of the year as well. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to them. So that's, that's good. Yeah. You can never count on the attention span either. If somebody's attending it remotely, well, you exactly, know, they're always yeah. distracted by something. So yeah, exactly. The experience is always so much better in person. Yeah. So just to kick us off, um, I just wanted to say if you can give us a little bit of your uh, background. As I said, you know, you've been in EUC for a long time. You've had a very kind of, you've done a variety of roles throughout EUC. So if you just kind of give us a, an overview of that, if, if you don't mind. Yeah, a professional conference goer. Um, <laughs> I used to save all the lanyards until a doorknob broke off that I was hanging them on. <laughs> was it the weight of all the lanyards that caused it to right. fall off? Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, so I, uh, gosh, I, I have had pretty much every role that you can have that's in end user computing throughout mm. my career, dating back to the 1900s, right? Mm. Back, back into the nineties. <laughs> I was a practitioner back then. I, I, I learned, um, uh, Brian Madden actually came to me one day. We worked the same Vivar in Cleveland and he said, hey, I'm going to go do this thing called Citrix Metaframe. Do you want to come and try it with me? I've never done it before. And so we went out and we we learned it on the fly at a, at a customer. And like from that day, uh, I it, I was just hooked on end user computing that we didn't call it that. So at the time, I was a consultant practitioner, um, moved into different roles uh, in-house, as, you know, back to consultant. Um, eventually though, I, uh, started working with Brian more closely on BrianMadden.com on his, on the industry website, writing, speaking, yeah, uh, like, putting on conferences, all of that. Absolutely. About it. Like who, who hasn't, who didn't use that? I, I remember like numerous times Citrix issues, BrianMadden.com, see if we can find a solution. <laughs> it's just like, it was, it was a go-to for us before we had like, you know, Twitter and all that kind of, and yeah. All the other tools that we now have at our disposal, you know, I couldn't believe all the limited. people that said it was their homepage. <laughs> <laughs> I could, I could well point. imagine it was, yeah. I, I used it a hell of a lot. Wait, you know, like you, I started out, you know, I, I started out in an IT help desk. Then I went to uh, a Citrix based role for, for a partner in Ireland. And I was like, sit, what, what is this? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I can, I can, you know, work servers and stuff. And then what's this stuff you put on it? Okay, yeah, let's do that. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, funny story during that, during that consultant time frame, um, Brian and I were working together at a at a another VAR in Cleveland, Ohio, and uh, the salesperson uh, that that we worked most closely with, a customer came to him, and do you remember Citrix had a product called Extranet? It was an SSL VPN product. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they, and, but we didn't know anything about that. That was networking, but they had acquired this thing and a customer came to him and said, Hey, I sold this. You need to drive to Toledo a couple hours away. And, uh, and he's, and, and he's like, yeah, it's for Citrix. And we're like, okay, what, what's it about? And he's like, it's extranet. We're like, we don't know that. And he's like, well, I already sold it. <laughs> so 
So I remember this very clearly. Um, we're driving in Brian's sob. Brian is driving, and I am literally reading the extranet manual out loud to him <laughs> on the way to this customer. So that and, and when we got there, we actually did it. Um, but yeah, audible for, before audible even existed. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so now now I have the good microphone. Um, yeah. That, it's, so so it was kind of down in the trenches that time, right? And then um the so BrianMadden.com, that era came and I learned kind of how to to uh, to communicate these all these difficult concepts and stuff that have been around for so long and um a- after a while it was like 2018 2017 something like that i sat down and wrote an article that i realized right right as i was done writing the article i'd realized i'd written the exact same article 5 years before um and i i don't remember what it was but a switch flipped in my head and was like you have written all the words gabe time to find something else to do um and so I called my friend Kevin Goodman uh, at the, at the time he was at FS Logics, and uh, I said, "I don't know what I do. I used to be a practitioner. I haven't been in a data center in eleven years. What do I do?" And he said, "You do product marketing. I need product marketing. You want to come work for me?" And so that's how I started to get a taste of the vendor side. So I went there, was acquired into Microsoft for a little while. Then I went to go work for VMware and product marketing there uh, for Horizon, specifically Horizon Cloud on Microsoft Azure, and. Uh, uh, at some point in time, I decided I just kind of wanted to broaden back out again. I mean, I liked I liked being in the vendor and kind of dedicating my time to one product, but uh, I I really enjoy talking to all the different vendors and um and and then sort of communicating you know their stories to people. Uh, and so an opportunity came up to become an analyst for Enterprise Strategy Group, which is part of Tech Target, which used to own BrianMadden.com. So it's kind of a, a full circle thing. It's so a full circle. That is but, that is the longest short story I could possibly tell you there. Oh, no, that, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that, that, that's really good. And and obviously, uh, yeah, given, given what you've done over the years, like, like obviously I'm I'm now a PMM. So, um, you know, I, I'm in that role now. Um, but your role at ESG... Um, so, so one of the things I suppose is like you said you were trying to simplify things, but have things got simpler? Because I don't think they have. No, I think um, I, I, I think the role that I had as a PMM, and you probably feel the same way. I, I would imagine is that there are very complicated things going on behind the scene that need to be. The 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 art here is um, communicating them in the most effective way, so that regular people can understand it, right? So that IT practitioners yeah. who are tasked with a million different things every day can mm-hmm. grok it really quickly, as opposed yeah. to like sitting down and having a hour long briefing with a product manager who can go through all the ins and outs of things. Um, yeah. And so there's a storytelling element to it that that I really enjoy that. Um, uh, that I think all these different vendors are struggling with. And then, and, and then there's always constant pressure, both among themselves, you know, com- competition among themselves, but then also just whatever the industry, whatever the macro trends are, not in the industry, but just in the world, right? COVID's a hugely overused example, but it still is putting pressure on us in different ways and, and, yeah. and highlighted some weak spots and, and, and now it's gen AI and, and things like that. So there's always this pressure coming from outside that we have to figure out how it impacts the end users. EUC is not just desktop virtualization anymore. It's no. you know the endpoint management. It's the applications. It's the OSs. It's um, you know, uh, weirdly, I spend a lot of my time now talking about unified communications and collaboration, and not like how do I get teams to integrate into my PBX or whatever. But it's it's more like you know what kind of devices are going in these meeting rooms. Um, how what what features are Teams or Zoom or WebEx or whomever. Um, building in for collaboration and what kind of capabilities do those have and how many of these tools are in use in organizations and stuff. And so all of this really bubbles up to the end user experience. And obviously that's something that's, you know, that, that, that's kind of what this conversation is going to turn into anyway. Right. Like this is something that's very important to Liquid yeah, and very important to me. Yeah, but you can no, see I'm, where it's not just desktop vert anymore. It's just, it's so many yeah, things, and there's absolutely. so many different complicated concepts here that you know something has to unify it all. Exactly, and that, and that's what I wanted to uh, kind of you nice segue. Um, uh, is, is little on the uh, nose, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> is you know you wrote a piece recently on LinkedIn, um, 
and um we'll put a link to it in, in uh, when we when we put this out uh but essentially you were talking about dex which as we know is the go-to term at the moment but you were also talking about how is is it getting a little bit confused what dex is and and is it actually employee experience so can you expand on that a bit yeah um so dex digital employee experience um we also have other terms out there and user ex no What's E E U E M end user experience management, I think. Yeah. Um, and then VMware has a product called Dean uh, dynamic, no digital employee experience management. VMware also has a product called dynamic environment. We, we have another term for it as well. Yeah, as well. So <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. think digital employee experience. Uh, yeah. We've right. we used DAM as well. So for, for stratosphere. So yeah, we can't get out of our own way. Right. Yeah. Let alone like let the industry decide it on their own. And these are all these terms that I've said so far are all actually related to each other, different mm. ways of saying similar things. But then you also have employee experience and employee experience is a term that's very close to digital employee experience, but is. It it, it is about as unrelated as it can be. Um, if you look at the companies and what the technology is behind it. And so I wrote an article. I'm hoping I'm not going to do a terrible job of explaining this in, you know, verbally as opposed to on paper. Yeah. Um, I wrote an article that tried to get to the bottom of what's DEX, what's EX, is there any overlap, and so on. Um, so let me try, let's see. So digital employee experience is, I'm thinking about the end user experience from the technology perspective, from their technology experience perspective. So a lot of this is performance monitoring. Um and how IT organizations can ensure that the end users have a good experience. And so they, they do that through performance monitoring, through automated remediations, um, some self-service components there, like trying to not have everything result in a call to the help desk, but also trying to intelligently figure things out before they affect the end user, um, detect and resolve those things before they affect the end user. Put a pin in that for a second. Employee experience now. So not DEX, just EX. Employee experience is more like, is this person engaged with their job? Do they enjoy their workplace? Ah, um, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, are they engaged with their teammates? Is It's more of like an HR kind of perspective um, for, for, for employee satisfaction, mm -hmm. uh, maybe, is, the, is yeah. the way to put it. I'm sure that this is not how... Service now or Qualtrics, not service now, Qualtrics or, or or the players in that space would characterize it. But that's mm. kind of how I've been mentally drawing the line. The problem mm. is that there's some overlap there because from an employee experience perspective, from an employee like satisfaction in their role in the company, technology has a, has a role in that, ha, mm. ha, has, has a little bit of an impact on on how satisfied they are with their employment and their job mm. and the company and so on. And so while it's i'm trying to draw a very definitive line between the two there's a little bit of overlap and so and and that's that that seems to be shared that that problem seems to be shared among the people that are doing decks um at th these days so i think we're just really early on in the market trying to figure things out um the dex term is a term that i think next thinking gartner um, kind of built. Um, I could be leaving out other companies too, but I think Gartner's the one that kind of like certified that term. Um, I don't know if there's a better alternative. You know, it doesn't, and that's not like calling out the name of a new segment of the business. Like that's not my job anyway. Yeah. Um, it's just, I think we're going to have to just see how things evolve for now. Mm. So that's, that's what that post is all about. Again, terrible job of, uh, of explaining. No, it no, 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 no. I thought that was, re that was good because uh, you I know, try to draw the line of technology and HR, but yeah, yeah, not. exactly. And that, but as you said, there's a, there's a massive overlap between the two because yeah. technology plays a part in how, you know, if an employee is having, you know, really bad user experience, apps are crashing all the time. They're going to go oh to hell with this company. I'm going to go somewhere else because they're just not making any progress with this. So, so yeah, yeah there's definitely that overlap there um, that, that we, we see um you know from from our own perspective we're very much you know as you said this term is being defined by gartner essentially but 
as an industry, um, do we need to look outside of that and, and maybe redefine it in in certain ways? Um, because you know, is, is it all is it all encompassing what what the way Gartner defines it, or or could it be a more broader definition of, of what we do? Um, it's a conversation I have a lot, and I'm still trying to figure out exactly where I land on what the definition of Dex should be. I mean, obviously, there's there's the the performance monitoring, the analytics, you know, that that component of it is important. And um I, I think that's kind of ubiquitous across the board. There's the automated remediations using machine learning and some AI components. But when we say AI these days, everything becomes chat GPT and this is not the AI that we're talking it's just about. Just an just as a large le- learning model and not not you know, there's so many. Yeah, as you said, AI is more far-reaching than just uh, ChatGPT. Yeah, yeah. Um, not that there aren't ways that these things can be integrated together, but um, absolutely. But but yeah, for the most part, we're we're, we're talking about more like machine learning than than mm-hmm. anything else. Mm-hmm. Um, and then and, and then the the other core tenet that Gartner has set up that I'm still trying to figure out is is user sentiment. Um, mm-hmm. and 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 and. Uh, Asking the users, you know, what their experience has been, um, how, uh, and then using that as some, you know, uh, qualitative data uh, to to help inform the 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 cause and the resolution of of the issues that the platform is seeing. And there are lots of different schools of thought out there among all the Dex vendors or all the people that are in the Dex space about whether or not you need the user sentiment. Um, and that's something I'm I'm curious. Uh, I think we've had this conversation to some degree, but I, I'm curious where Liquidware comes down on that um, at the moment because you've got command control, which just looks fantastic, and I know it's a you know big deal entrance in the deck space for you guys. There isn't currently a user sentiment piece. No, in there, there but- isn't currently a user sentiment. Um, we're yeah, it's it's something we're we're definitely looking at. Um, maybe not for command control. Um, maybe for Stratosphere. Um, because uh, if you think about it, Stratosphere is more about that kind of detailed diagnostics and collecting large amounts of data. Whereas, kind of you know, command control is very much one to one. Try find an issue, pinpoint it. But you know what we we are saying is, and, and the two solutions go hand in hand. So essentially, what you can do is you can determine an issue with command control. You can then go and say, okay, we pinpointed that issue, but now let's look. That's on one machine. Let's look at a thousand machines. Have they got a similar issue? Oh, they do. So we can gather all that data in Stratosphere. And then we can essentially, you know, say, do something like, oh, we can maybe push a patch out via SCCM because we've done that correlation. So that's mm-hmm. one of the ways we're looking at the two solutions kind of working together. But but yeah, the, the user sentiment is, is definitely something we're looking at. We haven't quite figured out how yet, but um, I think, as you said, those surveys are kind of a component of it, essentially, because you, you want to kind of gather that user sentiment. Yeah, but I, see, I, even without that, that whole thing that you just described sounds like a viable approach to solving a Dex need. So yes. that's that. That's where I'm trying to endeavor yeah, I, to I, define. I think, I, I think we're in a, we're in a similar kind of uh, stream of thought that this is where we kind of skew from Gartner because they're saying Dex is defined by you must have user sentiment. And we're like, well, do you really, you know, if you're resolving the issue, why? So, so yeah, I, I, yeah. I think that's, that's a part of it going forward essentially is, you know, how is Dex defined and it's something we're, we're, we're definitely looking at um, for the future. Yeah. So, and, and this is the conversation I have with lots of folks in this space and, 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 mm-hmm. and customers as well. I mean, there's, I uh, I forget what event I was at, but I was talking to a room full of um, it was it was a mix of consultants, customers, vendors, mm-hmm. and having this conversation and and specifically it was like what <laughs> what's the value of the user sentiment? Some people think that it's extremely useful. Other people think that that would just be white noise. Some people think that if you prompt the user to say, "Hey, is everything okay right now in your environment?" They're going to start looking for something that's wrong. Like if you go to the doctor and the doctor says, "Hey, has your elbow been hurting?" 
you can bet your elbow is going to hurt, you know, <laughs> before the <laughs> exactly. end of the day. So, um, there's, uh, 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 there's just, there, there are a lot of schools of thought here and, um, I'm not, I, I haven't, I haven't decided a hundred percent where I land yet. So I hate to be so, so waffly, but I just, I feel like I can, I can see the direction this is all heading and I don't want to exclude people because they don't have, you know. The, yeah. I, I, yeah. No, I, I, I agree. And it, as you said, it's, it's, it's like, what is the value of the user sentiment stuff? If, uh, if, as it, as you said, do you go users then go, oh, Ooh, well, I better look for a problem, but where one mightn't exist or, you know, it, it kind of hypersensitized things where the minor stuff issue is suddenly oh well that's that's definitely an issue whereas you know it might be something that you know most people live with all the time so so i think yeah. we have to be careful and um over in over analysis but as i said yeah it's 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 a hot topic <laughs> it's something that's discussed constantly so um and yeah i yeah. think a lot's to have to, how the how the machine learning part of it kind of ingest that data too because it's not like that's going to ring a bat phone back to the to the help desk and says, oh, this user specifically said something like it is just another data point. And so I could yeah. see efficiently trained, you know, the 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 machine learning component, the, the actual you know sauce of the system can mm. kind of factor that in among everything. So it's really I, I, I think we're just relatively new in this in, in the space still. And so we'll see how it evolves and which features are prioritized by customers and and, and so on and. Um, yeah, but really exciting space and user experience has always been, you kind of, you can't be an EUC lifer like me with, you know, whatever, what is it? 2023. So I got 25 years now in this, you, you, you wow. can't spend this time in this space. I'm at 18. Out. Yeah. <laughs> it, it goes by fast. Um, but you, you can't spend this much time in that space without caring about the user experience. And so to see an actual kind of segment of EUC dedicated specifically to that and to making it admins lives easier. Um, uh, it's this shift left model, right? Of 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 yeah, taking things off of the service desk's plate, and then there, and then letting them do some of the stuff that level two support and three support can do, and and so on. Like mm. anything that's making our lives easier as practitioners, and also you know making the user experience better. I'm all for it. So let's let's make it as wide of a net as we can, and and uh, see where it takes us. Yeah, I I I when I when I first started hearing about this. Uh, about Dex, about probably about two years ago, is like, oh, so EUC is actually about the user again. <laughs> yeah, we finally you know, put an acronym on that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. We finally <laughs> put a, a user centric approach, whereas we were about, you know, oh, we have to build servers and the capacity and all of this. And it's like, well, what's the end user experience about? What do we care? The performance is fantastic, all that. They should be happy. And it, now it's it, it's very much flipped. And you know, uh, Dex. No matter what way we define Dex, it is now becoming um, a metric for corporations, and and you know they are like going. You know the 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 financial reports and stuff. They they are looking at different aspects, and uh, you know Dex is one of them in terms of employee sentiment and and that kind of thing. So, yeah, it, it is. It is becoming, I think, as you said, we're still kind of at the early stages of it. And and so it's, a, it's it's an exciting space for all the kind of vendors and customers and partners uh, in that space. Um, and as you said, as we integrate more things like more machine learning, then it will, you know, it will change or it will mm -hmm. evolve. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think. I think that's probably a, a good segue into the, one of the other questions I want to ask you is like, we, we've kind of skirted around it, but, you know, AI, um, you know, we know it's not just chat GPT. We've talked there about machine learning, but from your perspective, what do you kind of see as the kind of the impact of AI on end user computing? Yeah, it's, um, it's a really good question that I don't have a real, def a well-defined answer to, but I'm an analyst now, which means that um, a part of my job is performing research, and mm. so I I have plans to to put research behind Gen AI specifically as it pertains to EUC. Um, just like I've got research that's in the works now for digital employee experience and trying to put some definitions ar around that. Yeah. Um, which, by the way, um, routinely when we look at what IT priorities are through any of the research that we do. Security is always number one. 
um, employee experience is always in the top three or five on that list as well. So that is something that organizations are prioritizing. Mm -hmm. um, that that applies to Dex. That also applies to Gen AI. Um, looking at what what I want to focus on he heading into next year is Gen AI within productivity apps. And the obvious low hanging fruit there is Microsoft Copilot. Um, Microsoft yep. just announced that it'll be out. I think November first is when it'll yep. be there. And so I'm already. I, I, yeah, I think I think yeah, part of it'll be November first, but part of it, which the component within the um, Windows 11 update, I think is coming actually on the 26th. So part oh, of it's going to be. Yeah, I think some of the kind of free stuff is coming that, and the the full paid version. I think, as you said, is November first. But yeah. The, if we think this about a, it's a futurama thing like shut up and take my money like I just, exactly yeah no I, I i'm like i'm definitely i like okay so you're going to integrate this into all my office applications absolutely here here take my yeah. money now um if if you can you know go through all of that i cut out all the kind of but that's just that's just one aspect of it isn't it, it uh, on the productivity side there's there's so much as we you know as we we touched on if you look at you know all of these uh vendors in our in say the deck space how do you in, implement ai take for example ourselves we have you know we've just done it at a very basic level we can give you the process name and and information utilizing mm -hmm. chat gpt but yep. there's so much more um and i think you know it's it's what we said we have all of these data points and how do you process all of that data? So use, utilizing AI and ML seems like the most pertinent, pertinent thing to do is to utilize these resources because it's going to take a person so long to go through them. So why not have, um, you know, an AI or ML go through this presented and then, you know, it can be an analyzed by a person because to pick out the trends or, or, or assist anyway, you know. And it could even be it could even be uh, trying to figure out the best way to engage with end users. Let's if we bring it back to user sentiment, you know, Absolutely, what's the yeah. most effective way to communicate with them when I get the what what how do I get the the best data back? And there's mm. there's probably a less brute force way to do it, but I keep thinking about the um the machine learning algorithms that have been trained to play Super Mario Kart or Super Mario Brothers. Let's say we're like the first thing it does is just hit right, and as soon as Mario dies. Then it tries something else the next time. And by the end of all of its iterations, it's learned how to play Mario and it can play it yeah. way better than any time, anything you ever did. Um, mm -hmm. There are, so there's end user experience implications to that. There are IT implications to that. I think call center, service desk, all customer experience, all of those things are going to be, are, are the low hanging fruit for gen AI specifically. Yeah. Um, I think ultimately what we'll probably end up with, and this is bigger picture stuff, but is is um, domain specific language models for each kind of area of the business. So there'll be one in legal, one in accounting, one in IT. Yeah. yeah. Um, and there there are, and and then it'll be kind of like, well, how do I, as an employee, how do I access each one of those? So there'll probably be one that's like a federated one that has visibility in each one of those other ones, and maybe those other ones. Some of those are private, some of those are public. You know, it, it's it's. I, well, that that's the thing. Like the, the whole private public thing is is a huge component of this because, like, who owns the data? You know, we're all mm -hmm. using ChatGPT, but on OpenAI's platform, and the data is owned by them. It's um, uh, now I I know given the implementation by Microsoft, obviously they're going to allow it in your own kind of um, tenant and that, so so you can control the flow of data essentially. Um, so there's less. But yeah, I I, th I think that is, it's a really exciting thing. But at the same time, there is you know data security and data uh, sovereignty issues in, in, intermingled yeah. with it all. Well, that's why I think you know it can we this can spiral out of control, just like our conversation about Gen AI has, right? Like we've <laughs> we've gone into so many different areas, which is yeah. why like I'm trying to from a scoping perspective, I'm trying to look at just how it affects productivity apps right now. Copilot, yeah. I'm so excited about because I've already used. Uh, uh, chat GPT to write Python scripts for me that like convert word documents to PowerPoint slides or, mm. you know, like bullets and word documents to PowerPoint mm. slides or to write VBS macros, VBA yeah. macros um, to format stuff for me, because I, I know it can be done. I just didn't want to do it myself. Like and sit there and figure it out when I can just be like, Hey, do this. And it just does it. Mm. It's a three-step process for me now though. 
But when Copilot's included with Office, and I can just say format all of the slides, you know, the, the in this way, and it just does that. That's going to save me so much time. That'll make my content better. That's going to be worth thirty bucks a month right there, um, which I think is what the speculated cost was going to be for Copilot in Microsoft 365. But um, yeah. so uh, what, whatever the cost is, I mean, it, 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 I, I should be able to find value in that. And I think organizations will be able to as well once they get past the privacy implications. And, and Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, I think um, just, just looking at it, 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 it's such an exciting, to, well, it's, it's, it's always exciting in an end user computing, in my opinion. Um, there's always yeah. something new and something changing and evolving. I think, you know, obviously I think AI has, you know, we, just since earlier this year, I think within January, we first started hearing about open AI and then it's just absolutely spiraled uh, since then. And we'll obviously continue at a massive pace, but Obviously, we do we do have uh, the AI there to assist us in learning all this stuff now. So. Yeah, <laughs> use the AI to Absolutely. learn about AI. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right, that's going to be uh, that. That could be bad. <laughs> it, yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, because that's all right. We, yeah, no, no. If you, yeah, because like I, I, I put stuff into ChatGPT sometimes. And I'm like, you're lying to me. That doesn't do that at all where do you oh we can have a whole other podcast about arguments we've had with the ai <laughs> yeah um gabe i think this is this has been a really good conversation so i'd really yeah, like to thank it. you for your time um yeah i've really enjoyed it we could probably talk for probably another hour if not longer because there is just so much going on but um so i as i said thank you so much for this um i hope everyone's enjoyed the episode so uh and uh Take thanks care. for watching and listening <laughs>